Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about the subject of absolute maxima and absolute minima, or just maxima and minima of a function. Uh, so let's start uh, with this definition, and let me just read it to you and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So the definition here says, let f be a function defined on an interval i that contains the number c, okay? And then we call f of c, or the functional value of c, is an absolute maximum of f on i if the functional value at c is greater than or equal to all the other functional values uh, in that interval i around c. Okay, so in other words, a way of thinking about this is that at c, the function is bigger than everybody else, okay? And then over here we say that f of c is an absolute minimum of f on i. If f of c is smaller than or equal to, and that's important, everybody else in the interval i, okay? And then another definition that's important for us is together uh, this absolute maximum and absolute minimum those are called extreme values of the function. Okay, the very biggest that it could ever be or the very smallest it can ever be. And I think it's uh, fairly clear why this would be important to us in calculus. We care about where things are big. We care about where things are small. We care about where our profits are big. We care about where um, our costs are small or where our velocity is big or different things like this. So we care often about where is something the biggest it could ever be or the smallest it could ever be. And this is the discussion that we want to start today on maxima and minima. Okay, so together though these things, we call them extreme values of the function, where it's the very biggest, where it's the very smallest, and we also call these absolute extrema. So let me draw you a picture to, to kind of show you what's going on. All right, so really what we're looking at here is, uh, let's draw a function. So um, here's a function. All right, and say that I'm uh, standing at this point on top of this curve. One way of thinking about being at an absolute extrema and uh, maybe like my little stick figure, maybe not, but he's standing on this curve and he's looking around him, okay? He looks to his left, he looks to his right, he asks the question, am I standing at the highest point on this curve? And so he looks around, he looks left, he looks right, and he discovers, yes, in fact, I am standing at the very highest point on this curve. So no matter which direction he looks, he doesn't see anything that's higher than him, and he concludes that he's standing on an absolute maximum. Okay, so this is an absolute maximum. All right, uh, similarly, maybe you have another picture where you have a graph and someone standing down here and let's say that he can look all around him on this curve and he can see infinitely far on this curve and he looks and everywhere he looks, things are taller than he is. So no point on that curve is lower than the point that he's standing on. Then if that's the case, then we call that point an absolute minimum. So he's standing on the absolute bottom point of the curve, just as this guy's standing on the absolutely biggest point on the curve. Now, I drew this uh, curve this way for a reason. Well, what about somebody standing right here on this point? What would he say? Well, he would say that right around him, he seems to be at the lowest point. But if he were able to, Let's say there's a little guy right here. 
if he were able to see through the graph, he could see that there are in fact points that are lower than him. So he is not standing at an absolute minimum. Uh, we have a name for this as well, and we'll talk about it in just a second. That's a local minimum or a relative minimum. Uh, but this guy is, if he could see everywhere on the curve, he can see he's at the very bottom. So he's at the absolute minimum. Okay, not all functions have absolute maxes and absolute mins. Let me show you an example of one, okay? So let's say we have a curve. Here's A, here's B. And let's say that these don't have M points. So at A, there is no functional value for this function. At B, there's no functional value for this function. And at C, we're at the very highest point. Okay, so I could ask two questions. First of all, does this function that I just drew have an absolute maximum? And I think everybody would agree, yeah, there's a highest point on this curve and it happens at x equals c. So up here at f of c, that's my absolute maximum. And I would say, correct. So here is my absolute maximum. <clears throat> then I'd ask the question, what about an absolute minimum? Well, this is kind of tricky. And some people would say, uh, there's an absolute minimum at A. And it's like, well, no, it can't be at A because there's no functional value at A. And then they say, okay, okay, well, what about the point right next to A? And, and that's where I have to question a little further. It's like, well, what's the point that's next to A? There is no point that's next to A because if I take any point that's close to A, there's a point that's closer. And once I find a point closer, there's a point that's closer and closer and closer and so on forever. There is no closest point to A, so there is no minimum value here. Now you might say, but it gets close to this number. True, there is a limit value, but there's no closest number to A, so there is no absolute minimum. So this function does have an absolute maximum, but it does not have an absolute minimum. So let me write that. No absolute minimum. So let's talk about a theorem. This theorem is called the extreme value theorem. And whenever a theorem has a name, you can kind of assume that it's kind of a big deal in mathematics. So let's read the extreme value theorem together and talk about it for a second. So what the extreme value theorem says is something very important. And that is that if a function has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum, so it actually has that biggest point and it actually has uh, so that minimum value, well, the question is, where would that happen? When does, are we guaranteed that something has the absolute maximum and it has the absolute minimum? Because I just showed you an example where that's not the case. So when does it happen? Well, we know it happens if we're on uh, a closed bounded interval from A to B, so the endpoints are included and it's continuous. So if you have a continuous function on a closed interval, it must have its absolute max, it must have its absolute minimum. And we'll use that later when we're trying to find absolute maxes and mins. If we're dealing with a continuous function over a closed interval, it has to have them. And so then the question is, okay, now that we know it has an absolute max and min, how do we find them? And that's where this next definition is going to help us out a little bit. So we need a new definition. And uh, this definition says, suppose that we have a functional value at some point C. So F of C exists, okay? But the derivative at C does not exist or the derivative is zero, okay? So if the derivative does not exist, what does this mean? Well, that might mean 
uh, there's something really bad happening with the derivative, or it could just mean if the functional value exists, then there is a tangent line, right? Because it's a function, functional values where it's continuous at least have um, tangent lines, but the derivative does not exist, meaning that that tangent line must be vertical, okay? Or uh, the derivative is zero. Well, what does the derivative being zero mean? That means that the tangent line is horizontal. So what this is really saying is, suppose we have a point C where the function exists and its tangent line is either vertical or horizontal, okay? That's what we're saying so far. Then we call the point C a critical number of the function or possibly a critical value. And sometimes I might even call it a critical point, okay? Uh, the key word here obviously being critical. So a critical number, a critical value, a critical point, that's all the same thing. Um, it's a point C where the derivative of the function is zero or it has a vertical tangent line. Now let's look at a definition. Uh, the function f is said to have a relative maximum or a local maximum at the point c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval containing c or a relative minimum at c if f of x is less than or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval containing c. So this is uh, not the same as an absolute max or min. So absolute max or min means you're the very tallest in the world or you're the very lowest in the world. Relative max and min or local max and min means that you're the biggest guy kind of in your little neighborhood or in your little sphere. So if I were to draw a picture of this real quick, um, let me erase real quick here. So if I were to draw a picture, it would look something like this. So, so let's say we have a guy standing right here. And he looks around him uh, and he sees that there are certainly points higher than him in the world. Okay? But if he couldn't see very far, like let's say uh, he could only see in a very small narrow band around him or some small open interval around him, then he in fact does think that he is standing at the highest place in the world. Okay, And it doesn't matter how wide that band is, if you can shrink the band down small enough so that he thinks he's standing at the tallest place in the world, then he is standing on what we call a relative maximum or a local maximum. And uh, in a similar way, this point and this point are both, in this case, local minimums. This one might also be considered an absolute minimum, but absolute minimums are local minimums. Local minimums are not necessarily absolute. All right, now let's go over to this theorem. Uh, the theorem says that if we have a continuous function, f, and it has a relative extremum at c, relative being the key here, so a local uh, max or min, then c, has to be one of these critical numbers. Okay, so if you come over here and you look, what's happening at all these points? They're the tops of hills where it has a horizontal tangent line, or it's the bottom of a hill where there's a horizontal tangent line, or it could possibly have a vertical tangent line in certain situations. So if you have one of these uh, local maxes or local mins, then the place that that happened was a critical number. Now, that doesn't mean that every critical number has a local max or min. That is not true. But certainly every relative extremum happens at a critical number. That's going to help us. Okay, 
Uh, the last thing I need to talk about before we start looking at some problems is where do these absolute maximums and absolute minimums actually happen? Where on the curve, if I want to know where, what is my absolute maximum or where is my absolute minimum, where do I check? Where do I look? And there's two places where you need to look. If we're dealing on a closed interval of a continuous function, then there's only two places where these things can happen. They can happen at the endpoints of the interval. So if you're dealing with an interval from A to B, it could be A, it could be B. And the second place that it could happen is it could happen at a critical value. So if I wanted to know where are the absolute max and min of a continuous function over a closed interval, then I need to test two things, both the endpoints to see how big, how small are the functional values of the endpoints, and then I need to test how big and small are the functional value of those critical points. So I need to find the critical points and then test the critical points for their functional value and the endpoints for their functional value. And that's how I find absolute maxes and mins. Let's practice this with some homework problems.